Hey everybody, it's Jilly Mooch. Um, okay, so this is me coming to you to tell you that I have decided, I'm really excited but scared to say it at the same time, um, I definitely want to be a creative groomer and I definitely want to compete. Okay, so here's the reason. All right, I've had my salon, um, it'll be two years in November. That's coming up fast. I can't believe that. Additionally, well, because of that, I've had occasionally, you know, I've always wanted to, you know, add a pop of color here or there um, to dogs. And it's been, it was difficult at first because I was, I'm self-taught, new groomer, new salon. You know, you got to build trust, right? Um, these people are handing over to you one of the most valuable things in their lives, their dogs. They're like children to some people. Um, and I think, as I've said before, and I will always reiterate, I think it's an honor and a privilege to be a dog groomer. Like I said, these people hand you a precious thing and ask you to beautify it, take care of it, pamper it, love it. And for me, I started getting clients that trusted me to create with it, to help express the dog's personality on the outside. Um, the number one thing I hear from my clients is that, and the thing that really started to get me hooked was because of this, I hadn't thought of it before, but when people see a dog with a little bit of color on the tail um, or on their ears, or even with just flair, not just flair, even with flair, um, bows, collars, things like that, the reaction they get from other people, or the reaction the dog receives from other people is, I would have to say 95% of the time, totally positive. Kids love it. People love it. They go, oh my God, look at that, you know, where'd you get that done? Or, um, she's so pretty or he's so cute. You know, I do, I color, uh, boy dogs, their tails and I've done blue like into black and you know, there's tons of things that you can do. But the, the number one thing that I've heard and I believe is that the more positive interaction that a dog receives from a human being, the stronger the human to dog bond becomes. Dogs begin to appreciate not just their own people, but other people in general. So the dog becomes more confident. The dog um, trusts its owner. Um, the world is a joyous place for the dog when they're receiving positive feedback. There's very few people who are gonna come up to a person with a dog with maybe a, a pink tail or you know little shiny earrings on and, and be like that's stupid I mean who's gonna do that in public not many people you know a lot of people do bashing and stuff on Facebook but that's really different so I've always been appreciative and I've pretty much done for free um, in my salon anybody who would let me do any aspect of color ears tails um, started researching products, um, you know, got blow pens, um, chalk. Um, I started off with um, Critter Color. Um, I, I brought everything <laughs> from the shop home because I wanted to include it in this video. So I'm going to have stuff everywhere and I'm going to start showing you my stuff. But that is, for me, a very strong reason to get your dog involved in expressing itself creatively or allowing your groomer to help your dog's personality shine through creative grooming. All right. Um, with that said, um, at Hershey, Janine and I took, oh God, I've got so much stuff. Um, Janine and I took um, Angela Kumpi, Adrian Pope, and Lori Craig's creative grooming class. I walked into there and there's this white poodle on the table and you know, what they did to that dog, the way that they transformed it is everything that I had been wanting to see because I've only been allowed to dabble in 
blow pens with ears, um, a little bit of color, like um, critter color. Okay, this is critter color, and you can get it from Warren London. Um, you, if you follow my Instagram page or my Facebook page, um, then you know Heidi. And right, and Heidi is the first dog that I was ever really allowed to um, do regular creative uh, things to her. Um, every groom every time she comes in so I knew we wanted temporary so this is what I started with first um, is Critter Color by Warren London now the thing about this um, is, is I'm not saying this will happen with every dog but I was mostly just doing Heidi at first who's a, a golden doodle but she's got the uh, confirmation of a poodle um, and her tail is short she's a doodle but her tail is short only because a former groomer accidentally nicked her tail. Um, it went necrotic and she had to have part of it cut off. So it looks like she has a poodle tail. Um, it's short-ish, but now it's poofy. So when I use this on Heidi's tail, which is what I started with only doing her tail, the the um, you put this on and then you blow dry it and brush it out and that's it. Um, you don't put it on and rinse and then dry. This is meant to be applied topically and then just dried. But the texture of her tail was really changed and dry and coarse. And even with a little uh, conditioner, it didn't change much. So Heidi's mom wasn't nuts about this. So it caused her to kind of step back a little bit. And it caused me to go forward into trying to find different products to see what was out there. Hence me finding, um, you know, um, uh, Opaws and uh, Crazy Liberty, um, which I haven't tried yet. Um, currently an Opaws girl, um, and uh, I have something from Angela Kumpi. I'll show you in a little bit. But this is where I started, right? So for groomers out there who are trying to get into creative coloring um, and creative grooming in their salon, my advice to you is this: um, start out with doing something small and doing it for free little things like this, the cost versus the reaction you're gonna get from your client. You add, um, you know, a red, if you have a, you know, a red, white, and blue tail. Heidi is cream, creamy colored, mostly white, but um, for July this year, I did um, a red, white, and blue tail with blow pens for her. And it ended up looking like a rocket pop. You know those rocket pops we used to get as a kid? Um, it ended up looking like that. And I've decorated her with bows and um, it was a hit. And the next time, um, that was like the first time she had kind of gone out outside of like female colors and she did more of a thematic thing. So the next time we worked on Heidi's ears. Heidi wasn't crazy about the blow dryer at first. I didn't uh, want to do color on her ears. I didn't know how she would take to it. Um, but once Heidi and, and you know, um, and, and my relationship with her grew and the bond grew, um, Heidi completely trusts me. And... Um, when she comes in, it's almost like she's just my dog. Um, Jen, don't take that the wrong way. I mean that in the best possible way. Jen calls me Auntie Jill, and Heidi knows exactly who I am. And um, they go in, and you know, Heidi's thrilled to see me, and she's amazing. She's a great dog, and she has come very far from what happened to her um, in, in another salon. That was a complete accident, by the way. I have to keep saying that. I'm not saying anybody did anything to hurt her on purpose. Just want to make that clear. So salon owners, um, what I learned in the uh, seminar is there are small things you can do to get started and once um, you offer it for free once and then you charge, all right? And we'll get into pricing in, in, in a little bit, but I wanted to tell you that I've decided to become a competitive creative groomer. So everybody knows that I just have, not just, I have Ruby and she's a German Shepherd. Well. The kind of creative grooming that I want to do is going to require me to have a different kind of dog. So um, I've wanted a second dog. Um, I considered Ruby having puppies to, you know, in order to keeping one to get a second dog. But I decided not to uh, breed her because I love her so much. And um, I don't think I could take her puppies away from her. I just don't think I could do it. Um, I know it sounds kind of weird, but, um, I just, I just kind of don't want to do it to her. Um, 
she's perfect the way she is. I love her. And I'm sorry to everybody who wanted a baby Roo, but there will be no baby Roos. I'm going to have her um, spayed. Hasn't happened yet, but she's three, and I think it's time. Um, so with that said, I'm going to be adding to our family. I just don't know where my dog is yet. My dog hasn't found me yet. So I don't know when my competition will start, but it has already started up here. I have an idea. And I learned so much in that seminar. I learned how to make the idea that I have come to fruition. They taught us about color application, types of color, um, application methods, um, chemicals, um, pet safety, research. Um, they taught us about sculpting the fur, um, how to elevate creative grooms for competition using like attachments, you know, like feathers or, um, they did a cat in the hat. I'll, I'm going to add some pictures at the end of this. Um, and, uh, if I can get them from my phone to my laptop, I've been having a problem with that lately. Um, I want you to be able to see what I saw in that class. Um, I am going to reach out to Angela and Lori and Adrian and ask for their permission to use um, those pictures and to possibly use some clips from uh, the video recording that I took while I was there because I was like up close. Um, I walked in there and whenever Angela said, you guys feel comfortable and, and come on up and you can watch right next to us what we're doing, you know that my butt was right up there doing it. Um, because I was just hooked immediately. Um, what also helped me be so engaged was the way the three of those women act, interacted with each other. Um, it was truly inspiring and learning about each of them individually, um, was fantastic and watching them all work together on the dogs as a team was amazing. And then at the end of, um, the, uh, on Sunday, they showed the movie Well Groomed, which stars them. And um, Kat Opson, who is another creative groomer, and um, lots of other groomers um, who compete creatively. And so after I saw that, I mean, I just, I, that was it. I was in tears. I was in tears for so many reasons um, because of the sisterhood, the, the family and nature that they had formed for the love of those dogs. Unquestionable, without a doubt. Those dogs love it. There, I'm sure that there are dogs that don't, um, and then you don't use that dog for creation. Um, this brings me, it's reminded me of something that I read in Angela's, um, one of Angela's books, uh, A Creative Collection. All right, I got this um, uh, from Paragon School, the booth at Hershey, and one of the first things she says in here, all right, right here, I don't know if it's backwards for you, I hope not. The most important aspect of creative grooming should be the health, safety, and comfort of the animal that you are working with. Enough said. That's one of the first things you see. The most important aspect of creative grooming should always be the health, safety, and comfort of the animal that you are working with. And there's a little pink toy poodle. That right there says it all. And all of these products are pet safe. These are not things that are toxic, that can hurt them. Um, like I said, you either have a dog that is okay with being groomed creatively, and then you, you can have dogs that aren't. So the dogs that aren't, you don't do it. You don't push them. And you let them just be dogs. But there are some dogs that eat it up and they love it. They love the attention. They love the pampering because it is pampering. Um, and... It doesn't really, um, the way some people get critical about it, the dogs don't see it that way. No dog, creatively groomed or not, sees the world from that perspective. They live moment to moment, day to day. When they're hungry, they eat. When they're tired, they sleep. When they're playful, they play. Um, dogs live in the moment, and I believe that that's what creative grooming is, is about taking time to create a moment. 
Um, and knowing that a creative groom doesn't happen in one grooming session, that it's done over time and it's planned, um, you know, knowing that I'm good, I'm, I'm happy with that. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, even in a creative grooming competition, they give breaks. Your dog is allowed to come in with certain amounts of the groom already done, um, which I'll get to in another video. But I just wanted to share with you some of the things I learned, okay? So this is stuff that I started like gathering as soon as I um, got out of that seminar. Ladies, if by any chance in hell you're watching, um, Angela talking to you at your booth um, was amazing and thank you so much for talking to me for teaching me for allowing me to be the girl that sat on the floor and Lori and Adrian you too thank you for letting me to be, be the, the one of the people that came up and got up close as you were sculpting and creating and painting um, allowing me to learn without feeling like I was an intrusion that was amazing it was one of the best seminars I've ever been to and you've already hopefully seen my Hershey 2018 and my Hershey 2019 um, uh, videos so you know how I was affected by that so excuse me I'm gonna be chugging from a big coke bottle because it's almost gone and I don't want to dirty a glass because I just did the dishes <laughs> all right so I'm gonna be doing creative grooming competitions I don't know when will be my first I know this, that I am going to Blake Hernandez's uh, Foxify retreat in Virginia. And with that package comes one free um, grooming competition entry. No more excuses. I'm in. So um, where do I start? All right. I'm going to start by showing you some of the things that I learned some of the tools that you need to be a creative groomer if any of you are interested all right um so i started a creative bag um this is my loyalty pet products bag and it's made for grooming and carrying stuff and it's perfect for all my grooming supplies so um i love that um i also have another um bag that i'm that i use i emptied this bag out but as i show you things that i've gathered as a result of learning from that seminar I'll put them back away and I got to get them in my car and back to the shop tomorrow. All right. So something that you're going to need because you're going to be working with color gloves. Okay. Some people are allergic to latex. So please make sure that you watch out for that. Um, the girls uh, recommended black gloves. Um, the ones that you can get at Sally's, but I got a whole box here. So um, they don't leak through. I'm going to go through these. And then the next box that I buy will be the black ones that you can get at Sally's. All right. So you're going to need gloves so that you don't get the dye on you. Um, you're going to need dye. All right, so let me show you what I got. I showed you that Warren London, um, that paint on one, and then you, you just paint it and then you dry it, right? I got my color in a different um, thing. It's actually like a cool, cooler type soft carrier thing, like if you were going to bring something to a picnic. I don't know. I just decided to keep them in here because it's lined and if anything got messy, nothing would get ruined. All right. So at Hershey, I bought color. Um, I bought the Opaz semi-permanent uh, dye kit and it came with um, Dahlia purple. Um, it came with pumpkin orange. It came with bubblegum pink. and shocking pink one is a light pink one is a darker pink i'm just checking the caps as i put these back away um it came with um hawaii blue sorry i'm old um hawaii blue kelly green flash yellow Um, some other colors that are not a part of Opaz in that um, Warren London. This is the Sweet Avery Red. I also have the Hazy Shade of Purple. 
I have the yellow snow. That is a hysterical name. I don't know why that did that. Yep, still running. Um, yellow snow and um, hazy shade of purple. Little uh, Jimi Hendrix reference there. Yellow snow. Dogs peeing in the snow. That's super funny, Mr. London. Um, here we have orange, orange county house hound. Yeah, orange county house count hound orange, and uh, central park green. These are cute. I'm already out of the uh, other pinks and like the blue and things like that. Um, but I'm sorry to be honest. I won't be reordering them. I'm not nuts about the, those colors. Um, hold on, I gotta plug you guys in. But I don't want to pause because if I pause, I have to edit, and I wanted to do this straight through. So excuse me, just a second. Okay, so um, let me show you some more of my color. Um, also from Opaz. Um, I already had this um, because I had a client check this out. This is a really great idea too that you can offer in your salon. Gender reveals somebody's going to have a baby and they have a dog. You can use Opaz Funky Color Shampoo, right? I have blue and pink um, because I had a client request that I dye her dog um, with, um, for the gender reveal. Turns out she was having a boy. You can go to my Instagram page. I'll try and post it at the end of this video and include it as a part of it. She was having a boy, so I dyed her boy blue, and I used the Warren London blue um, because this hadn't come in on time, unfortunately. But I am going to be using this, I believe, on Heidi for her Halloween costume, which is going to be a surprise and one of the first more all-over creative grooms I'm going to be doing. Um, I also have a client, uh, Tara, and she has a dog, Bella who's a golden doodle and um, we have a surprise groom coming up too. So um, I'm so blessed these two ladies are going to let me um, take creative freedom with their dogs and trust me, that trust that they have in me with their babies means everything. So I'm excited to be able to be creative and I'm excited for their the results and for their reactions. But so this um, you put it on the dog and you, you can wait up to 20 minutes with it in. The longer you wait, the darker the color is going to be or brighter, more saturated. All right. So, um, I think they also have a purple, but this is temporary and it will wash out. All right. Um, over the course of, you know, different shampoo times, um, depending on how many shampoos you do, you don't want to do like a bunch in one day, but it will wear out. Um, so... I also picked up um, the lightning and the developer, like the bleach, just in case I get a dog who has a darker coat and they want a different color that can't be applied over that color. I can remove the color from the dog, just like when we go to the hairdresser and we want to go blonde, they got to take out what we got in order to be able to lighten it. And so this is also pet safe, but you have to be very careful. Um, Angela, Lori, and um, Adrian recommended you stay by the dog while the dog is in the tub using this because um, you know you have to make sure that this is going to irritate the dog. Speaking of that, before I forget, always do a test patch at least minimum 24 hours. I mean, no sooner than 24 hours to see if the dog is going to have a reaction. All right. Um, if you're going to be using this, then you try that. If you're going to be using color, then you do color spot checks. All right. Always test because you don't want to apply a large amount of color and then have the dog break out. Not happening because remember the comfort. I got to remember this. I should have this tattooed on my ass. I swear. Um, because yeah, that's how much I'm in. Um, where did it go? Be patient. I need to restate it. The most important aspect of creating grooming should always be the health, safety, and comfort of the animal you are working with. Patch testing. All right. Um, I'll show you a couple more things. 
but wait a minute. While I'm talking about chemicals and dyes and reactions, you guys, um, if I know Janine and I, Janine Palmatier, Grooms by Janine, we have a lot of the same followers, which is fantastic. But we are two very different people, and Janine is um, a licensed cosmetologist. Um, she's now, you know, not a licensed anymore. She let her license out because she's a groomer, but she has all the training about pH, molecules, cuticles, open and closing, conditioning, not conditioning, dyes, color prisms, color wheels. She's teaching me a lot. She just did a, a really amazing uh, video about color um, and how she was against it initially and about how the seminar that we took changed her belief system and um, rightfully so because Adrian, Lori, and Angela did an amazing job presenting all of these aspects and those dogs born for it just like those women are born for it, born for it. Adrian Pope said um, in the movie Well Groomed, she said, um, you know, if you're a creative groomer, it's just not something you can dabble in casually, it's in your blood. And um, I kind of feel that way. I feel like dogs are canvases um, in a way, even without color at all. When I'm grooming, I see it before it's created. I can see what I want them to look like. So it is an art form. And um, my mother is an artist. Um, we, my brother is a musician. Um, you know, we have all, we are all creatives in my family. So I'm going to be giving you a different type of perspective as somebody who's going into this, somebody who already does do it in her salon and the competitive aspect of it. So I just wanted to kind of do a brief overview and to make this announcement that I'm going to be a creative groomer. So um, if you want a different perspective, I'm going to put a link down below to Janine's YouTube video, which you also need to watch because it's a completely different side of creative grooming. Um, another thing I got because they showed us how to do dog tattoos and I did one on Ruby um, and it was on my story and perhaps I think I can manage to get that um, at the end of this video too. I'm going to try and do like a video, a picture slideshow for you. Um, from Hershey, from, I stayed for the competition, right? So I was so into this, I started seeing them and my friend Alyssa um, from Toes and Bows, um, her dog, um, oh God, please don't fail me now. My brain is failing me now because it's quarter to 12. Um, so, God, I can't believe I can't remember the name of her dog off the top of my head right now. Baby, I'm so sorry. I love you. I'm old. There's my cat. Maybe that's the reason. Ditto. Ditto. The dog's name is Ditto. Yeah, I got it. All right. So, um, watching her up there, I had to stay through the whole thing. I wanted to see... The dogs, uh, the processes they were um, creating them, the finished product. I wanted to see their um, presentations, how they got the audience involved. I wanted to see the judging. I wanted to see all of that because if you're going to be in it, you got to learn it. And the only way to learn it is to experience it. So I stayed all the way to the end of Hershey to see that. And so glad that I did because holy crap, what I saw was beautiful and amazing. Um, so here's another thing that we learned in the seminar was about, um, tattoos and this tacky glue that you can get at any craft store and everybody recognizes this bottle is non-toxic. You can get a short haired dog like a Yorkie or a Schnauzer, a dog with, you know, a, a lab, even Ruby. I did this on Ruby. I used a stencil, right? On Ruby, I took one of the heart stencils. Um, and when you open these up, there's, um, paper that covers a, a larger area in case you're going to be like spraying airbrush color onto the coat so it doesn't get into other areas and I used this on Ruby and I used um, a one uh, I used a toothbrush I used the non-toxic glue I brushed that on her coat and then I sprinkled her with red glitter all right this is Opaz glitter powder I can't see the name of the color but this is the red and what's really cool about it is you take off the top and it's like a salt and pepper shaker. You see that? So you sprinkle it on, you don't get glitter everywhere. And then, um, you know, you 
um, after the glue dries, the glue dries clear and you spray it with some hairspray to set it and it doesn't get all over the house and it lasted um, I think like two weeks on Rue. It just now wore off, I noticed today. So I got red, I got this um, really bright pink, I got green, um, I got a darker pink, I got uh, blue, I grabbed everything I could find. Then I got this very cool thing from Opaz, which is a glitter gel. It's actually a gel with orange glitter in it. And I used this on a recent groom on Bo. If you go on my page, the um, male, uh, I think he's a Shushan. And I did an orange fire tail on him. Can you see it? I can't see. Yeah, it's like a little glitter. Let me put it all on my stuff. There you go. They can put it on me. Put it on a doll. Oh, there it is. All right. So, oh, and I got silver. That's all I had. So I need some other colors. But yeah, this is what you can use to attach that. You're also going to need this in another minute. Um, so um, that's something else I got. I wanted to get into that and just tell you how I use this. This video is not planned. I'm not scripting this, so it's just kind of coming off the cuff. Um, but I want to tell you about them in more detail because I did very briefly, you know, my Hershey Hall video, but I didn't get into um, a lot of it. Some, oh, let me finish my other colors first. So the other things I have are blow pens, and um, I had these already. Um, Yep, I had these already before I went. This is primarily what I've been using in the salon. So I got a tip for all you groomers that I got from Angela Kumpi and um, Alyssa, who was at the um, Angela's um, booth um, at Hershey. When these, if they happen to go dry, what you do is you take it and you turn it so that the, the marker portion, by the way, you can draw on a dog with this and make it, see that? You could draw directly on the skin. You don't have to blow use these as primarily blow pens. They're a multi-purpose. So what you do is that you put this in um, and then the, this cap goes back on top and then you blow. See? All right. So if they start to dry out, you can take this little top off here and yeah, I break my teeth on YouTube. Um, I can't get it off right now and I don't want to waste the time to, on your time doing that. But you can take that little thing off and you can put like a drop of water in there, just like a little drop, and it will re-wet it and reactivate it because a lot of people complain that these dry out. Well, the only reason that they are drying out is because they're not being kept in a moist environment. So you can put, if you have ones that are dried out and you haven't thrown out yet, don't throw them out. Put a little drop of water in there and you can put them in a Ziploc bag. Oh, see, I accidentally left one open. So I turn that back around. I'm going to probably have to add water to that. So they come in all different colors. Um, black, pink, yellow, red, blue, orange, neon orange, green, purple. Um, you know, I hope I said them all blue, whatever. Uh, they come in all of the colors, all of the colors. And um, I am going to be putting the drops of water in mine and putting them in a Ziploc bag. You can also um, put a paper towel that's a little damp in there. Keep them in a damp environment, um, but you don't want bacteria to form, so it's gotta be something that you're gonna be using regularly. You don't wanna harbor bacteria in there. So if you don't use them regularly, then you can spritz them to re-wet them rather than putting the drop of water and keeping them in a bag. You don't want bacteria to grow. All right, so this is, um, I believe, no, nope, not the entirety of the color that I have. Let me show you something very cool I got that Angela Kumpi herself created and designed. Now, the bad news is that um, I don't know where to get it. The good news is that I got it, and it's called Air Flare, all right? And um, I'm going to try and find... Um, the link and put it in the description for you. But here's the very cool thing about this. This is chargeable airbrush system, okay? 
and it comes with a cord. You plug it into a USB outlet. Um, here's where you plug your cord in, just like you would be when you're charging your phone, so you charge it, right? And then when you turn it on, on the side, you can hang this off of your, you put it in your pocket of your grooming smock. It has a hose that you attach to the part where the markers, these are blow pens, and you put it in side here. I'm not going to be blowing anything right now, but you put the marker in there, all right? And um, I did notice that it, you could see that there was a line, there was two pieces, and I saw it begin to separate, so I did put some duct tape here. Um, that's the only issue that I had with it. Other than that, I love it, and it worked just fine after the duct tape, so I'm not complaining. Um, comes with um, <clears throat> these pens, and these are the pens, they're not, the blow pens that I just showed you, they're not universal. So the ones that you're going to use for this um, airbrush system, <coughs> You can't just use any kind of blow pen. But the cool part about this is you charge it. It's got an LED display, um, battery percentage, and then there's a button, and you can choose how much you want to blow, which will also determine the width or the, the spread of the dye that comes out of those pens. So you don't have to blow your head off, which is what I used to do. Goes up to 20. 40, 60, and that's it, I think. Oh, 80, 99, 80, yep. So it goes up to 100 pretty much. But 20 is all I've ever needed. And when you cover the little hole here, you can hear it coming out. When you cover the hole here, that's when the color comes through the hose into the pen and out all right and when she used this in class she used it for the top knot of the poodle they did for um, cat in the hat theme and she blew the blue to make the fishbowl on top of the poodle's head and um, then it didn't look like anything came out and I was up pretty close and um, so again this is um, called air flare it was $99. So I don't know if it's more, if that was an expo special, but I definitely recommend this because this thing um, is going to handle my handling. Um, those other airbrush ones where you have to put the, water, the dye in and then you have to rinse out the needle and all that stuff. For me, I'd wreck that thing in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, you can get that. Um, and so when she um, put it on, it didn't look like anything was going on. And then she brushed it and then pff, it was nice and bright. I couldn't believe it. And I did one of my wow comments and she laughed. Thanks for laughing. Um, so I've got some other tools that they recommended. I got a little paintbrush. I've got some toothbrushes that I'm going to need. Um, let me show you about other tools. Um, I got this when I got all my Opaz chalks, which I accidentally left at the shop now that I think about it. But look at this. This is from Opaz. Look at all these. Okay. These will help you with dye application. All right. And for fine details. So I highly recommend getting that. I know I'm going to need it. All right. Back in the bag. All right. So, oh, there was another thing you got free. I got free, which was some more blow pens with a stencil. All right, so here's some more of the stencils that I got for Halloween. I got bats, and if you follow my Instagram or my Facebook, you would see Ronald Reagan, the little um, Chihuahua mix, and he got a black glitter bat tattoo uh, tramp stamp. It was super cute. Um, I got this guy. Um, I got the hearts I showed you that I used on Rue. Um, what else? There's the Batman I used. I'm wondering if they're reusable. That's the one I used on Rue. Um, flower, another one. 
um, pumpkin. And I gotta step up on upselling these in my salon. Five bucks a tattoo, okay? Changes your tax bracket and your profit margin. Um, another thing we were taught about is stick-ons. So this tacky glue is really good for that. You can put a little on the back of it and add it to the dog. So this is what I learned the other day because Lily the Mastiff, I tried to, to put one on her and just stick it on her because it comes with sticky, all right? And I saved this so that I could show you, but that um, her hair is stuck to the back of it. So this, this adhesive is not very strong at all. So you need to put a little bit of tacky glue under it and then apply, right? And we were going to put this on Lily's forehead and um, it wouldn't stay. So I just did her earrings, which did stay because I used a little bit of tacky glue. Right, so I got a few of these things. Very easy, very safe. I um, also just trying to keep my stuff together. All right, I'm gonna leave these in the front. That's where I put them before. Just trying to stay organized as well. I'm putting these in the front pocket where they won't get bent. You said get bent. So, all right. Um, here's another thing I did on Zoe the sheep -a doodle The one that's blowing up. Um, my little gorgeous mini um, sheep -a doodle Zoe, with eyes that are like the color of violet. No kidding. Um, so I did blue and purple on her. This uh, blow pen. Um, and I also used some iron-on crystals. And Angela taught us how to use these. And what you are going to need are the iron-on crystals. And what you do is you cut out whatever you need, right? Like I did a, a strand of um, four each on each of Zoe's ears. So you cut out the strip, right? And then you'll take off the cover and you'll there'll be a little adhesive a little bit on the back of it. And you place it on the dog and what you're going to have to need standing by ready to go and warmed up to about 400 is are you ready for it something you're going to have to be very careful with a flat iron a small one a very small one so all you have to do is you find the strand of hair that you want I should just do this to myself I wish I had heated it up and you'll place them on and you just tap it on for like three seconds and they stay attached so Zoe has little uh, I like called it bedazzled her I bedazzled Zoe all right um, and the other thing is threading I didn't get feathers but you can also attach feathers and it's just like adding an extension you pull the hair through a loop then you crimp it and it stays all right um, these are uh, Swarovski crystals that you can thread into your dog's hair. Um, and you can use these on ears, on tails. You can make one like a little nose ring they did in class. It was so stellar and so inspiring. So I got um, blue. I was going to do this um, on Zoe, but I decided to do the iron on instead. you got to be really careful with that flat iron be careful don't you dare burn a dog you hear me so these you thread through the hair and they stay just like a feather would once you crimp it okay so the next thing I got was nail wraps which I had already wanted to get prior to going because I had seen them online DMK Boutique by Milena Khan, who just won Creative Groomer of the Year. Um, her and her husband, um, um, Jameson Khan, they have a company, DMKBoutique.com. They are now coming out this week with wraps, um, uh, lots of different colors. So these look like this, all right? Just like the wraps that you use, but these are pet safe. All right, 100% pet safe. I have them on Ruby right now, and she's sleeping. Um, and I did them on Lily, uh, that Mastiff um, mix the other day. Zero drying time, so you're not using paint. I did order the Warren London paint ones, 
man, not for me. Um, at least not that dog. I tried it once. Um, zero drying time, smudge free, gentle on nails, eco friendly, pet safe, non toxic, and you peel them right off when you're done. But until you peel them off, they stay because Ruby runs around like crazy in the backyard. Um, here's my only thing on this. I wish these, you know, there's a comment on there to keep them sealed. So when they come, they come in this package, right? And you have to tear off the top. I wish, and, um, I might message her and let her know. I wish that this was a resealable bag in order to keep these. Because if you have a small dog, you can use this sticker. You know, you don't have to use one per nail. You can use this for a couple of nails. But Ruby's got big ones, so it's one strip for Ruby's nail. All right, I can use these on me. Maybe I'll use these on me. I'll show you how they work um, in my next video. So I got, like, um, those pinks. I got pink leopard print. I got this cool prism one, and they didn't have that many designs at that time. We got there a little later in the day than we had wanted to, so um, I'm going back online to order more. Um, one thing I already had at the shop I wanted to show you exists is Chi for Dogs Canine Styling Gel, all right? And um, it's paraben-free and made in the USA. And I got it at TJ Maxx, believe it or not, but they make it. So if you want, I do uh, Mohawks on dogs and I use this and I use Hydra's um, grooming style for hairspray and spray ups. Um, I use this little blow dryer here for that Warren London. Um, you put it on and then you have to dry it. Um, I use this. Um, so these are some of the tools that I already have and that I have now further collected. In order to be able to use those Opaz um, bottles, I'm going to be able to need to mix. So I have, you can get this at Sally's, um, one of these guys if you're doing larger areas. I already showed you my Opaz brushes. Um, and I have some little, from the dollar store, I have the caps also. If you need to mix colors or have colors in different um, containers, um, there's that. You're going to need those. Also, you're going to need plastic, plastic wrap or and or foil so that if you do an ear a color or the bottom of a foot um, the hair that certain color you're going to want to seal that off with the plastic wrap um, or the foil and then you can do a different color and then you cover that so that the colors don't bleed into each other and become a different color so plastic wrap and tin foil are something that you're going to need that i am going to need because i am going to be a creative groomer so let me see. Um, bold hair. All right, and then I'm going to show you the books for real quick, and then we'll be done. Um, another way that you can be creative in your salon is through bows and bandanas. So in my haul video, you saw what I bought, right? And I have some other things that I've gotten from being a member of Club Bodacious, which is a subscription. Um, service and depending on the size of your salon and the size of dogs that you generally get you can choose your own um, subscription mine is $49 a month I get a surprise um, every month it's amazing I love when my box comes from Bardell's I never know what I'm gonna get and so this is another way that you can be creative in your salon and it's safe in the mind of a client who might not yet be ready to apply a little bit of temporary blow pen to their dog's tail. So these beautiful bows, you can, um, you know, use these on ears, tails, um, top knots. Um, I have all different sizes, little pixie bows, that guy's black. Um, these babies, they're poofy. Um, the Halloween ones are so super cute. I can't wait. I think I'm going to use this on Coco tomorrow. Um, but there's so many different colors. Pixie bows. Um, oh, look at They come with like collars. And they're adjustable. So you can mix and match. You can do an orange bow or a yellow bow or even a green bow. All right, with that. And then they um, have a little necklace and a little uh, bow in their hair and I'm telling you 
Um, it makes them smile every time. And the cost of these bows is minimal in comparison to the priceless reaction that my clients give me every time they come in and they are surprised with pickup. And um, their stuff is amazing. So it's homemade by hand. Look at these ghosts. Are you ready for this for Halloween? I'm going to show you one of these guys real quick. Look at that. A little ghost bow. Are you kidding me? I did it. I did one on Charlotte. You can go to my page and look at Charlotte. She's a black labradoodle. Um, here's some more Halloween bows. Um, today I had Bella and um, there was a mix up at pickup and I did not get to put her bows in or get her pictures taken. So that happens sometimes. But I was going to be putting these with purple fascinators in and um, I had um, a collar or I am um, yeah I had a collar already to go to match um, I was gonna put the purple striped collar on to match the purple in that bow so these are some other ways that you can be safely creative um, in your salon and I only mean safely in the terms of in the eyes of the client who isn't ready to jump into color color is safe but check this out It didn't get much cuter than that, or more creative than that. Check this out. Oof. You know what I'm saying? Look at this embroidery and handmade by Bardell. You can keep these so that you can do like photo shoots, but I give them away because my clients collect them. Um, this little beautiful collar. Um, I got a hat specifically for Zoe when I went to Hershey. Um, this is a hat for a larger dog. Goes under the chin and tightens up. Stays on. Ear holes. They go through. These are tail ups, but Bardell sells them. Little hat. Okay. Super cute. Um, I got this for Zoe the sheep -a doodle when it's time, seasonally. I just couldn't resist. Um, I got her this little hat with a matching llama collar. How cute is that going to be on that little girl? And for autumn, I got a bunch of autumn stuff. I love these fuller frills. And it's just amazing. Look at the gold in that woven in. Ruby is wearing her ruby red frill. Um, I do have some more Halloween um, ones. I also want to show you real quick um, another type of necklace I got that I put on um, Madison the other day. Look at that collar. Mom loved it. Loved it. So creating the happiness factor for your client through flair is super important. And I'm really excited to now that it's the end of September going into Halloween, everybody's going to be looking spooky. And I also picked up from fab some fabric from my local fabric store and from Walmart um, to make some bandanas. And whatever I don't use this year, I will store away and keep till next year. And I will use it. Um, it's not stuff that's going to go to use and I'm not going to stop grooming. Okay, I want to say. No, nope, can't jinx myself. All right, so let's see. Um, as a result of that amazing class where they created and carved thing one and thing two on one side of the dog, the actual cat in the hat on the front, um, left leg of the poodle put the fish bowl with the fish, um, Angela sculpted and created the fish and attached it to the top of the poodle's head. It was amazing and it, it wasn't like, um, perfectly finished. But, you know, like competition wise, but oh my God, how cute it was. I was just hooked. So I went um, and um, I got this book at Angela's Booth, The Ultimate Guy, um, Guide to Salon Creative. All right. In this book, she breaks down everything for you from pricing to designs and how to do it, um, how to use vet wrap, which I actually do have at the shop, about color. Um, let's see, um, different types of color, 
about doing pet paint and stenciling like I did on Ruby and like with those stencils that I showed you I got. You can even, you guys, remember getting those kids, those temporary tattoos and your parents hated them and you don't know why. Um, oh God, there's the nose ring. You can do those on dogs too, but look at the Swarovski nose ring threaded. Step by step how to do it. This is what this book is all about. This is my Bible. Okay. Um, where is that? If I can't find it, I'm going to move forward because we're getting late here. It's an hour long about creative um, nail polish. S pricing. Um, how to make sure that you are um, getting paid for your time and for your product. All right. The other book is a creative collection. There's a history here. How to choose a dog to do creative on, how creative started, um, working with people, how to create a design, how to come up with a concept, and how to get from um, thought in your head to application on a dog. Like, look, it shows you about carving out design and everything. All right, and um, this is amazing. The other book I res I purchased um, from Paragon with a creative collect. No, I got this also at Angela Coom. I got this for free for purchasing the Theory of Five and Notes from the Grooming Table. And this is um, like all the Groomer to Groomer covers um, and the stories behind these covers for Groomer to Groomer magazine. And it was free. And there's little stories that go with each of... Um, the creative color that goes, the, yeah, the creative cover that goes, there's a story explanation with it, um, and sometimes instructions. So yeah, the last thing I got was from my girl Olga, Olga Zabelinskaya, I hope I said that right. Um, I got from her, I won, um, how to do the Poodle Sweetheart um, Japanese style DVD. Are you kidding? Okay. Talk about creative grooming, how to do the sweetheart style. So I am thrilled and excited to be get starting on this journey. And I would have to say that I'm well prepared for it. So clients, bring them, bring them to me. Everything is safe and um, support me in this journey um, as I dip my toe into the world of creative grooming. I'm thrilled, excited beyond measure, and I can't wait to get uh, my hands on this. I'm so excited I could cry, but I'm not gonna cry in this video, I promise. Um, so yeah, please remember to go and watch Janine's video it's a totally different take. Um, I am going to be doing my best to like show you how to become a creative groomer or how to um, ask your groomer to become a creative, creative groomer if I'm not already your groomer. Um, and to educate, 100% educate about the safety of this, um, that, it's, that dogs do give their consent. There are dogs who will clearly through their behavior and their body language tell you that this is not pleasing to them. And so you don't do that dog. That dog is not a creative dog. There are dogs that will happily sleep on the table um, and just like literally, I'm going to take a nap, mom, while you color my tail purple, all right? Or while you cut out a design of a pumpkin on my butt. Like it's just some dogs are made for it and some dogs aren't just like there are some groomers who are born for it and some groomers who are not happy to say that I really believe that I am a groomer who was born for it. And I am praying to the creative gods for, um, the design that I have in mind for my very first grooming, um, competition that it hasn't already been done in the past. And as if it has, it's not the same vision that I'm having, uh, come out. I can't wait for it. So I want to thank you for watching. I know this is just about a minute long, an hour long. I'm sorry. I'm tr I should try and make them shorter, but I'm so excited. I just wanted to go through all of that with you 
and um, I'll get more technical and appli uh, application. Um, I want to educate all of you about what it's like to become a creative groomer. And so thank you for supporting me and um, following me on this journey. If you have any questions or comments, as always, just leave them. Please remember to like and subscribe. All right. So Jilly Mooch, signing off with much love. Good night.